Hello everyone, Facebook Live as well. Um, welcome along to a very special course train today. And I'm here today, a bit of a legend in my eyes to be fair. Uh, me being an absolutely huge madness fan. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined by Mr. John Hasler today, boys and girls. I know there's a few Madness fans watching us on Facebook Live as well, so we'll say hello to them. So um, if you've got any questions, please fire them in and we'll try and, uh, we'll try and get round to them. I'm going to hand my phone over to our able assistant, Josh, who's with us today. Feel free to shout people's names out as well as the PM will give them a shout. So, John, um, do, tell us um, how you got involved with Madness. How I got involved with Madness? Um, it's this man's fault. Lee Thompson. Lee Thompson, yeah, it's his fault. Um, he, he said I'd give ten bob to anyone who will have a haircut like mine. Because that's how much it costs. Timony's on practice. Fifty pence. Fifty pence. No money. Fifty pence in, yeah. In, it's not like money. No, for the of money, ten bob. Timony's on Pratt Street. And, um, I don't know what possessed me, but I took him up on it. I went and got, we should put the lot off. Now you've come out some later, what are the questions in here? I was going to ask you about that. But the second part of the question was, did you ever get your money off, Tom? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not to this day. And why am I not surprised? <laughs> why am I not surprised? No. That... Talk about madness. There's only one madness. There's only one madness. What's that? Is there any, like, anything you've kept from the early days, such as your lyrics? Yeah. Um, anything like... Yeah, I've, got, I've still got bits of boxes of scraps of paper with envelopes with stuff scribbled on it. And, yeah. He found out that I had a guitar, because I bought myself a guitar, deciding I was right. going to be a rock star, whatever. And he said, do you want to be in my band? Just because I had a guitar. Uh, turned out I knew more than Chris, so I taught him to play the <laughs> You taught Chris for how to play guitar. Yes, way yes I did. <laughs> no, I, I'm, for some reason or other, couldn't have to start practicing in Mike's house, in his mum's house. Which is a video you'll see on TV, I'll leave it. Yes, yeah. that's the one, that's the one. And um, his brother had a band, and so one day I was just chatting with Mike after rehearsal, and um, I had to go on the, the drum set that had been left up downstairs. And he said, well, you're quite good at that as it goes and we've got two guitarists and no drummer so why don't you be the drummer <laughs> fair enough absolutely fantastic and you told us about your relationship with the band and who would you say your closest relationship was with an earliest relationship yeah Charles, Carl Smith or anything you went to school together uh, we did uh, we were at the same school uh, I was a year above him right which is a primary school so yeah and he lived around the corner from the next street so we used to play when we were kids um, and that's I, mean, I got Chaz into the bands to play bass um, partly because I felt a bit outnumbered he <laughs> needed some button yeah well, Chris, Chris, Mike and Lee were obviously a bit of a, a unit yeah and I was there and I thought well it would be nice to have, have one of my pals so I drafted Chaz in um, 1970s, we have levelling up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Cool Street. It's me, Mr. Scurf, and the team. Te Suggs, tell everybody about it. Hello, this is Suggs, and you are listening, apparently, to Mr. Scurf. Do you think you were a good influence or a bad influence on the band? Very much a good influence. Good influence on the band. Definitely a good influence. Yeah. Yes. You kept him on a straight and narrow. Yes. Tried to hack well. It must have been hard work with them, lot, because they, if anyone's read um, before we was we or watched any of the videos, I take it or leave it. It was, it was a mischievous element, the, 
99.9% of the band. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming down. It's great to see you again. It's been a while. It has, it has. It's been nearly three years, I think, prior to COVID, since we last had a chat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, new big band. I'm going to tell you a few facts about this place so I don't remember. So there's a... That's, that was the latest statue that was erected in Newbigin. That's called the Couple. And uh, but I, I think, if I'm right in thinking, it's, the statue was built based on a traditional Newbigin husband and wife. Okay. And, I, and when the sea comes in, it looks like they're standing on the top of the water looking out the sea. You hear the stories at the top of the pubs where they were just an absolute nightmare to try. Yes. Yes. That was, at that point, managing the band. Yeah, and so the, I was the person the angry BBC people would come to being angry and so what and were the I, issues I was, the I was sort of shielding I was basically deflecting like crazy all the time the band would get up to but I would, I would be the one that get it you know. so can you recall that first appearance on Top of the Pops where were some of the fans I think in one of the videos you mentioned some fans were yeah, well, just bring off for a pee or Oh, it wasn't just that. They, they were, oh, we're inside the BBC. Let's have a look around. <laughs> See what we're in now. <laughs> so they were like up the stairs because it was a big circular building. They were sort of up and down the stairs, round and round the corridors, and poking at the people's offices. <laughs> 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 no, no, not apparently the done thing. <laughs> recorded the track Bed and Breakfast Man Chris Bowman made a comment um, along the lines of Bed and Breakfast Man was about John Haslake being our manager he was very important putting the band together and he turned up at our house now and again and the next thing you know he'd be uh, sat there at breakfast time eating the kids leftovers ah, yeah. you know, very interesting story because uh, we spoke a few years ago about the difficulty of finding accommodation or transportation at certain times in London mm. you told me some interesting stories about I think they'd now be called the modern day Airbnb, but you're from a different way of uh, finding accommodation. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was um, like DIY camper vans. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, back then, a lot of people never locked their cars. I don't know why, but they just didn't. Um, so if you went down the street, you could eventually find a car that was open. And then, um, get in the car and spend the night putting on someone's back seat <laughs> or you know there's two of you so it's, someone has to have the front seat so we, we try and look for an automatic because then you haven't got a gear lever yeah. backing up because when you're on the front seat with a gear <laughs> lever right where it doesn't need to be it's nuts the car. but we got fussy we, we, we wanted not just an automatic with a bench seat we wanted to have a radio as well so we could get in an old van like an escort van and got in the back of that and kicked in that and gone back the next night and thought, well, we know where that is now. Um, and we were kipping in it and we got woken up by the guy driving away. <laughs> there's, and there's a pair of us with our with crops. <laughs> Looking a bit rough after a night out, anyway. So what he must have seen in his rear view mirror. The boy pays us for this, but in the booth before we was we. <laughs> Um, it mentions uh, it mentions that a lot of the band met up there, and that was a bit of a, a nucleus of how we'd all come together or play the big vault. What was the attraction of Hampstead? Um, so it was just girls and pubs, girls and pubs. That's yeah. that's in and it's, years, and that was yeah. And at some point, if it's a good weekend, you'd get word of where there was a party on, and somebody would go and the party there, right. and that'd be on. Yeah, and house party, crash. and we'd go. Yeah, we're going to give Tom those fictional, factional group, we're not quite sure about it yet, oh, but uh, we'll yeah. give Tom a group. As well, growing out there, some great stories in there. So, I think probably one of the important things I want to talk about is the John Hasler of today. Well, nowadays I'm living in Edinburgh, 
Uh, I've been living there 20 years now. Wow. So I work for the NHS, work in mental health. Wow. Um, Massive credit. So, I'm enjoy- I, 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 I said, I'm, I enjoy doing what I'm good at and um, pays the bills. So. You still involved musically? I am, yes. Um, I've got involved with a band up in Edinburgh called Crabs. Um, and it's three guys that are locals and they know each other through their kids' school and we play surf music. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so you are on board the course train. Let's jump in. Let's go. Let's speak to the personal possession now. So if you have any question on Facebook Live, please ask. Uh, do you think there'll ever be a return of cult to the band in any, any format? At the moment, it doesn't look likely, but I'm a yeah. never say never person. It, it is. I think the band are later on, they? they're all yeah. very much never say never. Um, have you spoken to Carl recently? Um, not in the past month. Yeah, but um, I, yeah, I do keep, we do keep in touch. He's still out in the sunshine. He's still out in the sunshine. He's, yeah. um, yeah, enjoying his grandkids. And yeah, and you the rest of the band? Um, yeah, speak to Mark occasionally. Um, not spoke to Suggs for a little while. Yeah. That's because he's got a new phone number. <laughs> Change his number. Change his number again. <laughs> So the only thing, I'll tell you what, in this book, yes. that it's not a lie, it's an omission. It's, it's a, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a bit in it which I was reading, I thought, that's, that's just, it's, it obviously it's not, he's forgotten this. It, it, the um, publishing deal yes. that they came up with, with, where the money gets split 50% between the writer of the song yes. and 50% between the rest of the band, but evenly between the rest of the band. Yes. And he says, he said in it, oh, I'm not sure where that came from. And I can tell you where that came from because it was from me. It was you. It was me. It was John entirely Drew. my idea. And it was to avoid too much friction on whose songs are going to go on the album. Yeah. Because that's a classic way. <coughs> and also, you know, um, people who might not write songs and they're playing in the band but they everyone's making lots of money that writes the songs and the other people just as important yeah getting nicked get nicked and, and if you look at the amount of bands I mean, you say Spandau Ballet and the fights they've had so I do like to credit myself with that putting that bit in I think it's been a very important part for them keeping together and still being all the original members yeah. all this time on Credited with writing mistakes, yep, which is the B side of One Step Beyond. That is, um, well, that was the first song that I'd written, the first song the band had written, um, and that was done at Mike's house. We were having a rehearsal, and there was a bit of a tea break going on. Um, and I just sat there with Mike and said, Look, I thought you'd written some lyrics, and it sort of goes, and I hummed a bit, and he started banging it out and the tune I started singing along then the madness style seems to kick in yeah and um by the time the tea had finished everyone came in and uh, started learning their parts to it it's a quite simple song you know it's not got a yeah. That's, that's probably a unique part of the band about the fact of being able to keep themselves together for 40 years so the same written in Mike's house his mother was his parents house his mum's house oh, absolute uh, bit of history there for the madness fans <laughs> Oh, 
my question uh, from uh, John. John uh, Young. Uh, is there any more reforms planned for the future Carbs record? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're amassing uh, every time we play a gig. We keep the money and we put it in the pot and we're, we're saving up for our next studio recording session and yes, we will have another 45 out. Um, if not this year, early next. De John, thank you very much for coming along today. It's, it's been very been interesting. It's been an absolute pleasure. It really thank has. You so much. Thank, thank, thank you very much. And, uh, and John Ewing, I'm going to get you some food now. I'm going to sit and have a snack and chill out for a bit and do some photos. And, uh, cool. But for everyone watching on Facebook Live, it's now time for us to say goodbye. So thank you for joining Bye us. Guys. For questions. And uh, Jimmy, thank you very much. Look at productions as well. I'll give them a mention. Thank you for coming down today. And uh, I said before, Christian boys, look, I'm giving them a mention. I'm sure. Go and buy the books. They're an interesting read. Very interesting read if you want to know yeah. the answer. And they're an easy read. I think that's the yeah. important thing. They're very easy to read. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for joining us today. This has been Mr. Scope's Coast Train on location at Cafe Boot Road in Newbury by the Sea. And we'll see you soon. Keep tuning in on Wednesday from 8 o'clock. And uh, thank you all very much. Good afternoon. It's dinner time. I'm hungry.